if I was to sink my teeth into your eye right now, would you be able to stop me before I blinded you? Give it a try. To me, this is the most memorable scene in Martin Scorsese's criminally underrated neo-noir psychological thriller, Shutter Island. Spoilers lie ahead. Released in 2010, Shutter Island stars Leonardo DiCaprio as US Marshal Teddy Daniels, who is sent to investigate the disappearance of Rachel Solando, one of the patients of Ashcliff Hospital for the criminally insane on the not at all ominous Shutter Island. Once on the not at all ominous Shutter Island, it's not long before Daniels begins to realise it might not be so not at all ominous after all. At this point in the film, Daniels has found the missing patient, who it turns out is a psychiatrist at the hospital. She tells Daniels that she had been forcibly sectioned when she discovered the hospital were experimenting on patients to develop mind control, so she decided to escape. Daniels is now completely alone. His partner has been assumed murdered, and Solando has told him to trust no one. It is here Daniels is picked up by the hospital warden. We were wondering when you'd show up. Have a seat. Taking a leisurely stroll, were we? I was, uh, just, just looking around. Did you enjoy God's latest gift? What? God's gift. The violence. On first watch, this scene is easy to overlook because of how on the surface pleasant it is. Nothing really happens, it's just two guys in a car talking. It also comes immediately after the biggest revelation in the whole film, at a point where the viewer is in dire need of some respites. However, I believe this is entirely intentional. Scorsese is not trying to actively scare us with this scene. The effect he is going for is far more subliminal, similar to the feeling of waking up from a nightmare you cannot even remember, leaving you feeling unnerved for the rest of the night. When I came downstairs in my home and I saw that tree in my living room, it reached out for me like a divine hand. After watching this drive, I am left with two questions. A. What the heck is this guy talking about? And B. Who the heck is this guy? Did you enjoy God's latest gift? What? God's gift. The violence. God loves violence. It was after many watches that I realised he's not saying violets, he's actually saying violence. I think this is entirely intentional to add to a false sense of security. It's not until we're deep in conversation we realise where this man's head is actually at. Why else would there be so much of it? It's in us. It's what we are. We wage war, and we burn sacrifices, and pillage and plunder, and tear at the flesh of our brothers, and why? Because God gave us violence to wage in his honour. So basically, what this dipshit is saying, and what seems to be his philosophy, is that God must love violence, because there is so much of it in the world. I thought God gave us moral order. There's no moral order as pure as this storm. There's no moral order at all. There's just this. Can my violence conquer yours? Not violent. Yes, you are. You're as violent as they come. I know this because I'm as violent as they come. Yeah, this is definitely someone you want responsible for guarding the most mentally vulnerable of people. This scene is disturbing in of itself. However, as with every other scene in the film, it takes on new meaning upon rewatch. At the end of the film, it is revealed that Daniels is not a marshal. He is a patient on Shutter Island. In fact, he is Shutter Island's most violent patient, who, in an effort to wipe his brain from the knowledge that he killed his wife in response to her killing their three children, has tricked himself into believing he is an entirely different person. Then, in a highly sympathetic effort to bring him back to sanity and avoid a lobotomy, Ben Kingsley's Dr. Cowley has the entire island act out the imagined scenario of Daniels investigating a fake disappearance. Everyone goes along with this, except this one warden. He could give two fucks about Cowley's plan. Cowley thinks you're harmless, that you can be controlled, but I know different. 
don't know me. Oh, but I no, do. You don't, you don't oh, know I know you. We've known each other for centuries. At first, we and Daniels put the warden's skepticism down to the knowledge of Daniels prior acts as a soldier in the war, even though one could ask, how would he even have any of this information? However, it's only on the second watch we realise he is actually referring to Daniels as a patient right now. Crowley thinks you're harmless, that you can be controlled, but I know it's different. This warden guy essentially spoils the film in plain sight, and we don't even notice. Which brings us back to that second question. Who the heck is this guy? Well, we don't really know. His constant reference to God, and how he talks with absolute certainty about what God wants, makes me see him as like a devil figure on Daniel's shoulder. I mean, throughout this scene, he's literally framed this way, speaking aloud Daniel's worst fears about himself. And that's maybe why Daniels is so resistant to this warden. Sure, you could put it down to him not trusting anyone, but this is extreme. For the majority of the scene, he can barely look him in the eye. Notice Warden is also an anagram for Andrew. The Warden symbolically is a reflection of Daniels' true self that he cannot face. And in the end, he is right. Daniels cannot be fixed. It's a masterclass in subtlety from actor Ted Levine, who many will recognise as Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. This dude treads the line between charmingly charismatic and absolutely terrifying just perfectly. The constraints of society were lifted, and I was all that stood between you and a meal you would crack my skull with a rock and eat my meaty parts. This scene is truly unlike any other in film history. Well, almost any. Well now, what's it to be, Lord? Another widow? How many has it been? Six? Twelve? I just remember. Sometimes I wonder if you really understand. Not that you mind the killings. Your book is full of killings. This is Robert Mitchum as Reverend Harry Powell in the 1955 film The Night of the Hunter. Here, Powell speaks with a pleasant demeanour, one-to-one -one with God. And if you're not paying attention like me the first time I watched this film, you'd miss that he's actually discussing murdering women in his spare time. If you haven't seen this film, well, you really should. It's ridiculously ahead of its time, and Scorsese clearly plays homage to it in this scene, from the discussions about God and violence to the obvious for a green screen. I've seen people comment that this more noticeable green screen is used to hint that Daniels is operating in a false reality. I don't know if this is true, but I am fairly certain Scorsese used this green screen to deliberately call attention to itself. For me, the two things that make this scene so unsettling are its uncanniness and ambiguity. Uncanniness being the feeling of watching something that at first glance is entirely normal and unassuming, yet is also ever so slightly wrong in every possible way. And ambiguity. This man could, or could not, be a threat. His words certainly border on threatening, yet his actions say otherwise. He tells Daniels that he too is as violent as they come, but offers no evidence of this being even remotely true. He speculates about attacking and potentially killing Daniels, but in a perfectly pleasant and calm tone that makes us completely unsure of how to feel about the current situation. As an audience, we feel uneasy because when we don't know how to perceive a potential threat, our brains don't fully understand how to comprehend it. There is no closure to be found in this scene, and it certainly does not give us any answers. In fact, the more we try to understand it, the less sense it makes, and the more unsettling it feels. 